Tim, welcome to Watch One, and thanks for logging on. Well, in the beginning, the Big Bang created the universe, but in 2005, Jean-Claude Vivert created a universe of Hublot Big Bangs. Today, we're going to look at the lineage of the Big Bang from 2005 through evolution to the 44mm classical Hublot Big Bang chronograph. We're going to look at materials, design, and terminology, and chart the progress of the first and greatest challenger to Audemars Piguet's legendary Royal Oak Offshore. Now, the design you see right here is essentially the one that debuted at Basel World 2005, the first revolutionary and now almost iconic Hublot Big Bang chronograph, 40 millimeters. You can see a little bit of a semblance of the previous Hublot MDM Geneve design. MDM Geneve essentially started the continuity of the modern Hublot in 1980. First known as MDM de Genève, the product was known as Hublot. French for portal, you could see a little bit of that aesthetic with the flanking wings and the bezel bolts securing the bezel to the assembly, but its revolutionary idea was fusion. Then of gold and rubber, it was a bit of a sacrilegious notion for devotees of luxury watches, but Hublot ran with it, made it successful, and by 2005, with the arrival of the Big Bang, even Patek Philippe had copped the notion with its Aquanaut, possibly the ultimate flattery. Jean-Claude Bevere took that materials fusion notion and he brought it up to speed with the 21st century. A titanium inner case, stainless steel brushed and polished on the outside, a ceramic bezel with inset H-pattern titanium bezel bolts, carbon fiber dial, composite case flank inserts, and of course that signature Hublot natural vulcanized rubber strap. Now you can see on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. It definitely wears with the presence of something like an offshore, and while Hublot certainly takes inspiration from the Audemars Piguet, I'm going to have to give the ergonomic thumbs up to Hublot, because while I can hardly wear the 44 millimeter offshore, Hublot scores in this basically an ergonomic coup with the fit of its nice supple natural rubber strap, the short pre-curved lugs, and the lightness of the partially titanium and composite case. It's an easy watch to wear on a smaller wrist, even down to 15 centimeters in circumference. You're going to have no trouble fitting this and wearing it comfortably. Now this is the essential fit of all the watches I'm going to showcase in the video. You can see it's not going to clear a dress cuff, but it might clear the sleeve of a blazer or a sport jacket, so there is some versatility built in. Now. In the beginning, there was the Big Bang, but Jean-Claude Bevere, being something of a Renaissance man with a hyperactive imagination, you knew this wasn't going to be the end of the line. And because evolution means survival of the fittest, Hublot introduced us to the Big Bang Evo. Now, the same essential case, steel, ceramic, titanium inner case, and the composite flanks with a rubber strap. What changes here is the composition of the dial. Now, all stick or baton indices even still have the carbon fiber dial base. I'll show you that in the reflection of the light. But what it does is it changes the look of the watch. Some say it's a little bit more austere, a little bit more formal. There are those who prefer the sort of tricolor sporting aspect of this watch, and there are those who favor the more austere, subdued, one might even say a little bit refined, dare I propose, on an Hublot look of the Evo. But each of these watches hues to the original principle of materials fusion and a sort of architectural element, almost like you're looking at a building that's half finished, layered. Each piece of the fabrication, each distinct material expressed as an individual styling element. And so after we had the Evo, having thoroughly established that architectural layered design language, Vivere took it to the next logical level. While we can see the machine expressed on the outside, it was the arrival of the arrow bang, arrow in this case being Hublot speak for the skeletonized dial, that really took the idea of layered design from the outside in. Now, in addition to being able to see the composition of the case around the Valjoux 7750 based automatic chronograph, we can see into the soul of the watch. And even for a brand like Hublot, which is driven heavily by image, by attitude, by the excitement generated from publicity, branding, you know, just the panache of the thing on your wrist. The allure of the mechanical watch, the heartbeat of the watch, is still an important part of their appeal, and Jean-Claude Bevere understood that. So now we can peer into the motion works, into some of the sub-register drivetrains of the chronograph without taking the watch off the wrist. So we have that terminology, the Big Bang, and all that it means. We have the Big Bang Evo and the changes to the dial, and of course we have Arrow, the idea of a skeletonized open 
movement surrounded by the Evo dial ensconced in the Big Bang case architecture, but there was one final evolution yet to be turned. And that came with the arrival of yet another material innovation. Now we're looking at the Ublo Aerobang Black Magic. So you take that essential shape, the proportions, and the design ethic. You add the evolution baton indices and, of course, the arrow open dial. And finally add a full ceramic case. Now we've taken that original ceramic bezel, virtually a scratch resistant to sapphire itself, and we've applied it to the full composition of the top and the bottom plates of the Big Bang. So that has two major benefits. First and foremost, it does away with the Achilles heel of the traditional big black watch. Now if we remember models from the mid-90s, the late 90s with the pre and post Vendome Panerai PVD Luminors, if you remember the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore End of Days from 1997, you recall that the first black watches were simply deposits on top of steel. They looked awesome until they met their demise in the face of a brush with drywall, a knock against a car seat belt buckle or a doorknob in which case they went from cool to hopelessly unsightly in a single blow. No problem with ceramic because it is a homogenous material. If you did chip it or scratch it somehow with a truly phenomenal insult to the wrist, it would still be black underneath. But because it is so hard, so resilient, it's almost impossible to scratch, scuff, or disfigure it without doing something completely foolhardy and quite likely to take a chunk out of your wrist as well. So you've got a watch that's gonna maintain its good looks for the long term. And that's the idea of a mechanical watch. That's the idea of a luxury watch. Long term durability and value. And that's really reached its apex with something like the Black Magic in full ceramic. It does give the watch a different look and it really creates a more sinister, sleek, and imposing timepiece. Although these are all 44 millimeter Hublot Big Bangs, it does have the look of a bigger watch because it is all of a piece. Like the Monolith in 2001, it's just a stark, shocking, and dramatic thing. It looks completely alien, and that's part of the appeal of the Black Magic in full ceramic. You can see all of these Hublot Big Bangs through the years, from the original Big Bang to the Evolution to the Evolution Arrow, and the ultimate, the Black Magic Evolution Arrow Bang, on our website, watchyouwant.com. And if you like these comparisons and luxury watch features, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc.